92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the Mornings, second date update. Today, a dude named Jack is on the phone for a second date update, and in his email, he said he's a real-life Ghostbuster. What? But now, he's not going to call back, so does that mean he got ghosted? So the Ghostbuster becomes the Ghostbusty? I don't don't know how it works. Jack, what's up? How are you? Guys, how's it going? Good. You're actually a Ghostbuster? What does that mean, really? Yeah, basically, I'm a paranormal investigator. Oh, for real? Yeah. I really did think it was like a play on dating terms. (laughs) No, it's real. It's real. Okay. I, I go to houses. I investigate, I guess what you guys would call haunted houses, mm-hmm. when are actually houses that are uh, preoccupied by spirits, mm-hmm. and I make sure that they are expelled. Okay. Right. Did your date know that this is what you did before she agreed to go out with you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. it's on my dating profile. All and right. you're not calling us about a ghost that you met at a house, right? Because we're not going to be able to call them. I don't think they have good cell service wherever they are. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I date only... Uh, Living creatures. Okay. okay. So what's right. her name? Uh, her name's Heather. Heather, all right. And you said it was in your profile where she could have seen that you're a Ghostbuster. So you meet her online or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'll be honest, I'm not really uh, sociable. Yeah. I'm kind of a weird guy in my own. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Anyone who is a paranormal investigator, I think that that just probably goes without mm. saying. But at least you know it. Yeah. I mean, what was it like, I guess, when you first met her? It was cool, and uh, she's very respectful about, like, what I do. She wasn't, like, making fun of me. I mean, she had questions, which was really cute. And for our first date, I actually took her to a paranormal ride-along. A ride-along? Oh, so she got to come with you on one of your investigations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I set up, like, a mini tour, like a little mini tour of places that I've expelled past spirits and stuff. Wow. Was this a surprise ride-along, or...? Well, I mean, I, I told her about it, and she was down. So okay. it wasn't a shock. It's not like The Exorcist. I know you see, you see like, you know, on movie portrayals where yeah. it's all, like, crazy and, like, blood spit. No, it's okay. not that. No bloody walls. <laughs> so nothing exciting happened then? Well, uh, something did happen. Whoa. Like what? So this house that I had, basically, it was a place I checked out before, but it was all clear because, like, they moved out. Because it's still haunted, mm-hmm. basically, okay. for them. Whoa. And I'm uh, just showing her around. And while we were on the first floor, we heard a weird creak upstairs. Okay. And then a thump. Mm-hmm. And then after a thump, we kind of heard a weird footsteps. Like, do 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 Oh, hell no. I'm out of there. <laughs> what you running. <laughs> Initially, I thought, like, the thumps were really loud. Mm-hmm. And, like, I thought, oh, maybe the owner's there. So I called out the owner. I was like, hey, Greg. Are you here? And there was no response. And then I asked her, should we go upstairs just to check? And she said, okay. Oh, my God. She's so brave. Oh, my God. You found the bravest date ever. Dude, I have goosebumps. (laughs) What'd you find? So keep in mind, and I I forgot to, like, maybe bring this up. I was actually strapped. I had my EMF meter, and I also had my EVP recorder on. What's that? Uh, It's an EVP recorder, which is an electronic voice phenomena. Okay. So we're both heading up the stairs, and I'm just like thinking, this is this is not good. Oh, wait, you're thinking oh. that. I've encountered sounds. I've never heard sound that loud. Oh so this is a very interesting case and okay. out of the ordinary. Oh. And this is happening during my date, too, when I'm like, Ugh, you know? Oh, right. my God, no. I'm dying. What happened? So we went up to the room, and I noticed all the windows are closed. Uh-huh. Okay, should that freak us out? Yeah, because yeah, Norton- okay, a lot of windows are closed a lot, you know? It should freak you out, okay? Because it was really cold, the room. Okay. And the windows were closed. Okay. Oh, I got it. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I thought you're that. feeling yeah. presence. All right, so it felt like there was something in the room. I didn't feel something in the room. There was definitely something in the room. Oh, my God. The room felt pregnant. The room felt pregnant. What? what? Wow. Okay. Uh, did the ghost yeah. you, bro? What were they doing in that room? What? It means that there's a presence there. And it's the pregnant. It's pregnant. You know okay. what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, it's full of ghost so babies. What happened then when you walked into the pregnant room? So at that point, Heather was very nervous and she has to leave and I had to let this case go. What? Which it, That's it? It pained me. I mean, it was horrible for me because this is what I live for. Yeah. I've never been into a room that pregnant before. That pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, I, I mean, I was with a date with Heather and like 
that that was president. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if she wants to leave, you were out on a date first before you were investigating. So I'm assuming you left. Yeah. But like, it was my fault. It was my bad. I shouldn't have brought her to my job as a date. So that was probably like a mistake. What was the vibe like between you two after you left? Well, I drove her home and uh, we stopped by to get her a milkshake. Just to like, you know, ease the situation. (laughs) You know, milkshakes just to lighten the mood because it was really, really crazy. It was crazy. Would you go on a Ferris wheel too? (laughs) Was there conversation? Did she seem like she was still happy on a date with you or was she just creeped out still? I mean, she was very cordial, but you could tell she was just like, she kind of gulped the milkshake really fast. Okay. So hopefully you guys can help me out. Maybe we could like reconnect and... I could bring her to an actual regular date. Okay. Yeah. Sure that I'm I'm not just this guy that goes and, and takes down like the other astral realm. You know what I'm saying? Kind I of. don't know what you're saying. I have kind no clue of. what you're saying. But <laughs> yeah. I understand that you want to take her out on a regular date. I think that's where you're going. <laughs> exactly, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well we'll play a song and then come back and call her and get your second date update, all right? Thank you. All right, hang on. Ninety two point five. Brooke and Jubal in the mornings. Second date update. Hey, Jack. Yeah. I bet you never heard this before. Uh, <laughs> the song from Ghostbusters. Yeah. That's got to be a new joke for you. Yeah. Just, I've, heard, I've heard it plenty of times, but yeah, that's one of my favorite movies anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. I bet. So you su- if you're just you tuning it. in to today's second date update, Jack is on the phone. And why am I playing the Ghostbusters song? Because Jack is a Ghostbuster. He's a paranormal investigator. And that's actually where he took his date. Her name is Heather. He took her on a ride along. He took her to some of the places that he's investigated and they ended up going into one house that is still, I guess, currently under investigation. And there was a creepy moment in a room there. She got scared and wanted to leave. After that, they had a milkshake. She sucked that thing down real quick and then wanted to go home. (laughs) And he hasn't heard from her since. All right, Jack, you can't think of anything other than maybe being scared by going with you to your job that would have turned her off from you. I don't know. I mean, like... I mean, I'll be honest, I'm a weird guy, so I don't know if something came off different than what other people do. I, I feel like, I mean, you talked all about you and what you do. Did you ever take the time to, to ask her questions about her life? Because the whole date seemed to be centered around you. I don't know, it would be like weird and awkward just to, you know, we're creeping around in a haunted house and I'd be like, hey, uh, what, what are your hobbies? Yeah, <laughs> might be a weird place to have what that conversation. Yeah. So we'll see if we can get her on the phone and get you a second date where you can go somewhere and then sit down and have dinner and ask her those questions, all right? Okay. All right, I'm going to dial her phone up right now. Here we go. Hello? Hi, may I speak to Heather, please? This is Heather. Who's this? Heather, how are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. Who is this? I'm sorry. What? Who is this again? Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. It's a radio show. Okay. What? Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> Don't Hello? Do, this. do you listen? Hello? Hi. Hi. You there? <laughs> Hi, is this like telemarketing or something? No. No, no, no it's, it's a radio that. show. It's called <laughs> Brook and Jubal in the Morning. And I'm calling you today because we got an email about you from one of our listeners. An email about me? Yes. Mm -hmm. We do a segment on our show. It's called The Second Date Update. It's where if you go out on a date with somebody and then end up not calling them back, they can email us to get you on the phone and find out what happened. So we got an email from Jack. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Jack, the paranormal investigator Uh that you went out with. Oh, I know who Jack is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Jack is confused because he thought you guys had a very interesting and fun first date. I bet he did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so he doesn't know why you're not calling him back. He can't figure it out. That's why he asked us to call you. To be honest, he just came off to me like kind of a perv. A perv? What? I thought you were going to say like a weirdo or creepy yeah. or ridiculous because he's a ghost hunter. <laughs> right. But I knew that going in. So I'm like, all right, I kind of like odd duck sometimes. So I was, I was open to that. Oh, that's okay. Um, and we go to this house. And he keeps saying that if I get scared, that I could cling to his body. Is that the verbiage he used? (laughs) He just kept saying this, like, all this weird, pervy stuff. At one point, he was, like, he was reviewing, like, the tapes Mm -hmm. of what he heard. Mm -hmm. And he's like, the ghost is saying, I want your panties. 
I want your panties. Panties? I want your panties. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he accentuated like panties. Whoa. What? Okay, that's creepy. <laughs> was that a joke? Is he joking? Oh, no, he was serious. And he kept replaying it with so much enthusiasm. Panties, panties. He wants your panties. <laughs> I mean, he did tell us that he was kind of a weird guy, so maybe he was just trying to, like, joke with you or something. Is, I mean, I don't know. Is there anything else that happened that turned you off? He told me that he slept with two women in life, which, oh. okay, so he hasn't slept with a lot, but he slept with six ghosts. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. No way. Two women, six ghosts. So is the issue because he slept with eight people, or, or or is it because six of them are ghosts? I'm going to go with that six of them are ghosts, <laughs> okay. and he's sleeping with more ghosts than humans. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Remember when Kesha said that she slept with ghosts? Apparently it's a thing. It's a real thing? Yeah. Huh? I don't know real, but it's a thing. <laughs> well, it's not my thing, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So overall, you just thought he was kind of creepy and weird. I was open to the ghosts, but... <laughs> them and yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. and talking kind of about the... their panties and then yeah. wanting my panties that was just too much okay. the guy having sex with well, ghosts was creepy and weird weird yeah i know <laughs> didn't see that one coming i'm not one to judge but i just had enough he like this was it for me this is when i was like i'm done here all right well <laughs> heather thank you for telling us about your date with jack i appreciate that i also need to let you know that jack is on the phone with us and wants to talk to you He's on the phone? Yes. Yeah, well, hello, guys. Hey, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want wow. to defend myself because there's a lot of misinformation and slander. <sighs> slander. By the way, you can do stuff with ghosts, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, sexuality <sighs> transcends planes. So, yes, technically you can do stuff with ghosts. And you're making it a crass. I have been intimate with ghosts. Now, oh. intimacy with... <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take the romance out of you. I didn't finish. <laughs> sorry. I have been intimate with ghosts. I've been intimate with six ghosts, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's completely normal. It's not. Yeah, no, sure. Wait, it's stop. Not, it's not. Well, what I mean, that? were the ghosts consenting? Yeah. <laughs> if the ghost wants to appear to me, and I'm consenting, what's wrong with that? What? I was, I I was asking about you consenting. I was asking if the ghost had consented, but all right, I guess, you know, whatever. Can you see the ghost? I give you permission. Listen, you know, it, it's hard to explain because you guys are laymen, so you don't know the world. But, okay. I mean, the reason they're ghosts in the first place because they're still missing something. Oh, right? then what they need is a part of you. I feel like you're trying really hard to defend yourself right now because this all came out on the radio. And I'm not defending myself. Embarrassing. <laughs> all I'm saying is, I'm ready for a real life experience and a real life connection. And that's why I just want to re I reached out to you. Look, I'm not going to say anything about whether or not you hook up with ghosts. That's your own business. But <laughs> in my presence, everything you kept saying was just so pervy. Oh. Heather, I honestly heard the ghost say that. It wasn't me. And I was just repeating what the ghost was saying. Okay. Okay. So then even if your ghost said that, did you have to keep saying it to me mm -hmm. over and over again? It was a bit much. That was a, a lot. Again, the room was pregnant. Okay. The room was pregnant. Uh, pregnant. Here we go with the pregnant. Thing. Okay. That word is creepy. Here's the thing. Like you made the date all about what you do. You like made her uncomfortable. You talked about your exes, whether they're living or dead. I don't know. It's just something you're not supposed to do on a first date. Like you did a lot of things wrong. All I know is, Heather, like, maybe, you know what, it was probably a mistake to bring you into my world too fast, mm -hmm. but this is who I am, and I would like to take you on a regular date to be part of your world. Okay. Part of your well, world. Heather, what do you think? <laughs> would you let Jack be part of your world? Would you go on a second date with Jack? We'll pay for it. I don't think so. I think if we were connected, he would have been able to tell that I was uncomfortable, mm. and so I think there's definitely a, a miss there. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a lonely life. Well, I mean, not really. You're getting all that ghost booty. You're fine. Yeah, you know, <laughs> get back out there on the market. I guess I guess it's hard to explain like connections between the other world and this world, and how like you're. you're I guess you're thinking in crass terms of like hooking up. You don't hook up with a ghost, okay? It's, you make love to a ghost. You bond with a ghost. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well. Clear. It looks like until you can find Very another clear. date, you're going to be bonding with some more ghosts because I don't think Heather is. Heather, are you still on the line? Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think Heather is a definite no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, guys, I know you're laughing and joking about this, but one day, maybe one day, a ghost is going to appear to you and you'll be singing a different tune.
Mm. I'll, be mo- I'll be moaning yeah. a different tune, it sounds like. I'm excited. Brooke and Jubal in the morning. The text in at 78592 says, well, at least he'll get to date ghosts for the rest of his life. Hmm. Talking about today's <laughs> second date update, if you missed it, this dude Jack is a real-life ghost hunter, and he took his date Heather on a ride-along to a home that normally has some paranormal activity. Yeah. And when we got her on the phone, we found out the reason she wasn't calling him back was because he was beyond creepy on their date. <laughs> we didn't expect that from a ghost hunter. Yeah. Anyway, at one point he told her, there was a ghost there saying, I want your panties over and over again. God, even when you say it, it creeps me. Yeah. Like, it just, just sits wrong, man. The There's word a lot panties of in general. Panty? Don't say panties. But what really crossed the line for Heather was when Jack told her that in his life, he has slept with two women, hmm. but six ghosts. Dang, bro. He says that being intimate with ghosts is completely normal, but he's ready for a real-life experience with Heather. And Heather is not ready for a real life experience with him. Mm-hmm. In the she, end, she's no second date. Man. Yeah, she could have had sure. a threesome with, uh, with the ghost. The ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that been I know awesome. that's that's a story to tell. So no second date, but he's got some ghost booty lined up, so everything should be fine. Remember, if you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show, and we will call the person who didn't call. 